Hi guys, so in this video, I'm just going to um, do a rundown of bearings, um, going through some past HSC questions and just talking about the main things you need to know about them. Um, so first of all, let's go through the syllabus points. Uh, looking at this, uh, we need to understand the difference between compass and true bearings, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but remember the two ways that we can you know, define um, the direction that we're going in. Um, and the next thing in the syllabus, and this is probably a more important bit, is solve practical problems using Pythagoras, Sokotoa, cosine and sine rule, angle of elevation, and true bearings and compass bearings. Um, these are kind of the questions that you see a lot where it's kind of like talking about like navigational questions where you might have a plane goes on a bearing of blah, blah, blah for you know 10 kilometers or something and then goes to another direction and you need to find the distance that it's traveled or find some other bearing. And um, as I'll talk about shortly, that it's a quite a common question. And then lastly, talking about um, uh, radial surveys as well, which again can re relate to bearings because um, you know the directions in which um, things are going could be presented in bearings. So looking at the things that are relevant to this in the reference sheets, are obviously, first of all, Sokotoa, because bearings aren't always going to be based on non-right angle triangles. I mean, we see that most often they are, but if you can create a right angle triangle in these questions, just use Sokotoa. Um, area, I mean, it might not be as relevant for bearings, but I mean, still, if I guess if it's a radial survey, um, you might need to find the area of something. And then, of course, we've got the sine rule and the two forms of the cosine rule. Um, and these will be obviously playing a big part um, with the non right angle trigonometry. So the last thing I'm talking about here, and I won't read the whole thing, but what I'm saying here, you guys can read it yourself. Um, what you we typically see if you look at project maths and then also past trial papers as well, um, you know, there's almost always at least one question where there's some kind of like either a radial survey or navigation or maybe both where you need to be able to, you know, maybe create your own diagram, but also just interpret the question where there's like bearings and all that kind of stuff. Um, what it generally boils down to is using sine rule, cosine rule. Um, so as long as you can do that and also um, take out the important bits of information from the question, it, you can pretty much, um, you, you'll see that it's almost the same question every single time. Um, so I'm just going to write a few things about like some important points to note before we go into some past HSC questions. So first of all, let's talk about the difference between true bearings and compass bearings. So um, remember, compass bearings are written something like this. So we had, might have like north 30 degrees west. So with the compass bearing, what it's saying is we're starting on the northern direction. And then once uh, we go north, then we go 30 degrees in a westerly direction. So something like this. So north 30 degrees in a westerly direction. Okay. Um, and remember with these compass bearings, it's always going to start with north or south first. So south 30 degrees west would be down here, or maybe like south 30 degrees east would be somewhere here. So it tells you the north-south, some angle, and then the direction in which you move. So we've got that. And then if we wanted to change that to be a true bearing, remember true bearings are always starting at north and going around. Oh, it's getting very bright there. It's always going around um, north in a clockwise direction to find what that angle is. So in this particular case, um, we'll just do 360 minus 30. So this would be 330 degrees. So 330 degrees. Now, you do see some people write T at the end for like to say that that's a true bearing. And I guess you don't need, you don't need to, um, the HSC doesn't, um, and it's not really stated in the syllabus either. If you do write the T, that's fine. And I'm only mentioning it because if they write T in the exam, then cool, but you don't need to write that. Although the key thing that you do need to remember with bearings is it always needs to be three digits. So say we had a bearing of 70 degrees, we'd want to write that as 0, 070 degrees, just so it's three digits. It's kind of like a notation thing more than anything else. One other thing I want to talk about is a thing that often uh, comes up as well is because the north-south lines are parallel lines and also the east-west lines are parallel lines, that means we can use um, results based on parallel lines. 
So let's say, for instance, I had like a plane or something that traveled 10 kilometers on a bearing of 130 degrees from point A. So we'll start off with point A. And whenever you got these kinds of questions, every point should have its own compass because it just makes understanding what's going on a lot easier. So 130 degrees is about like that. And then let's say we traveled for 10 kilometers, all right, to point B. So we have that. And then let's say um, one step further, maybe from there we traveled on a bearing of 230 degrees to point C for six kilometers. So 230, something like that for six kilometers to point C. And again, it'll have its own compass. We have six kilometers. Okay. Um, so the, what I want to look at here is see how we can use the angle relationships on parallel lines to find some angles that we might not have known. So we've got um, 230 degrees. So because this is 130 degrees and obviously east is 90 degrees, we can say for sure that this angle in here is 40, is 40 degrees, okay? Just 130 minus 90. So we've got 40 degrees. Now this is the east-west line and this is also the east-west line and they're parallel. So because that's 40 degrees, I know for sure that that's also 40 degrees. And then also from this question, I'm told that this is 230 degrees. So that means I know for sure that this is also 40 degrees in here because that's going to be 270 minus that 230. The reason why that's helpful is because let, let's say I needed to find, you know, that side or something, I would need the opposite angle. And to get that opposite angle, I'm going to use the fact that that's 40 degrees in alternate angles and also using this bearing to find that to be, this will be in 80 degrees in total which would then help me solve the rest of the question because now I've got that side, I've got that side, I've got X and I've got the angle opposite. So I'm talking about three sides, one angle, cosine rule. So it's really important that you do realize that these alternate angles things are helpful. And similarly as well, north, south are also parallel to each other. So I know seeing that this is 50 degrees in here, for instance, that means I know that's also 50 degrees. Or because I know that this is, um, well, this will be 50 degrees here. So that means that's also going to be 50 degrees in here. All right. So just using the fact that we've got um, parallel lines means that we can use those alternate angles. We can also use co-interior and corresponding, but they never really show up in this. Alternate angles does show up a lot. Anyway, so now that we've done um, a quick rundown, Let's have a look at some past HSC questions. And I picked questions that aren't on Project Maths because that means that you might not have seen it before. What I definitely suggest you do as you're going through this video is just pause it and then have an attempt of the question yourself before you see my answer, all right? So first of all, we're, um, what is the bearing of A from B? Now the key word here is from because that tells you where your starting point is. If I misread this and think it's from A to B, and I thought that this was my starting point, well then it'll be very easy because this should be 180 minus 60, 120. But that's not the answer because I'm saying from B. So what I should do is draw up a compass on B. And just like I was saying a second ago, this is north-south and this is also north-south. So that means they're parallel, which means they've got alternate angles. So if that's 60 degrees, that means I know that that's also 60 degrees. And now that I've got that being 60 degrees, I'm trying to find the bearing. And it should say true bearing, but this was back in 2006 when that distinction wasn't as important. Um, so basically just didn't have compass bearings back then. I'm in the syllabus. So we can do 360 minus 60 to find this bearing being 300 degrees. Okay, so keyword here is from telling you that you need to start there. And then we have to use the fact that these are alternate angles on parallel lines and therefore they're equal. And then you just do 360 minus 60. Okay, going on to the next question I have. So uh, this is from 2004, question 24B. Again, what I'd suggest you do is pause it, have a go at it yourself. And then once you've done it, go through, um, you know, read my answers. So we have Q is southeast of A. What is the size of angle PAQ? 
Well, that's a pretty easy one to start off with. Um, we're told that this is southeast, all right? And southeast, like all the northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest, um, they're all like have factors of 45 degrees. So northeast is 45 degrees. Southeast is 135 degrees. And here we've got PAQ, well, it says asking for that. And we're told that this is southeast. So that's just gonna be 135 degrees. So I mean, that's the answer. All right, but if it said uh, uh, southwest, that would be 225 degrees. And if I did uh, northwest, that would be 315 degrees. Going to question two, what is the bearing of R from A? So we're looking at here from A, keyword from. So that means we're gonna put our compass here. And then we have, um, you know, so starting at north, going in this direction. Well, we already had this 135, and now we just need to add this extra 50 degrees that we have here. So this is going to be 135 degrees plus 50 degrees equals 185 degrees. Fairly simple in that one. And, you know, looking back at the question, it also kind of looks correct because you can see um, it's just past south, which is just past 180 degrees. Note that this is not to scale, though, so you can't know that for sure. But, you know, if the diagram is pretty accurate, then you're pretty good to go. And then lastly, uh, question three. So find the size of angle PAB to the nearest degree. So we're looking at PAB. So we're looking at this angle in here. And I'm going to call that theta. In this, um, I now have this radial survey with a bunch of other drawings and all that kind of stuff. And all this other information out here is completely useless. I want to focus only on this triangle. So what we should do um, is just learn to dissect the information that we want and focus on that. So I'm just gonna draw a triangle here. Um, and I can't assume that that's 90 degrees, even though I might've drawn it to look that way. So this is 28, this is 35, and this is 31, and I'm trying to find theta. Okay, so again, can't just assume that's a right angle, um, but um, here we have, a non-right angle triangle um, where we're trying to find an angle and we have three sides. So three sides, one angle, clearly we need to use cosine rule. So we're gonna do cos theta and that equals 28 squared plus 31 squared minus 35 squared over two times 28 times 31. Now, remember when you're using cosine rule uh, for angles, the thing that you're subtracting at the end is the side that's opposite your angle. So here's my angle that's opposite. So that's why I'm subtracting 35 squared. Make sure you get the ordering right or you're choosing the right things the right place. Because if I did minus 28 squared, like if I mix them around a little bit, they'd be wrong. Um, so the way to think about it is the two things that you're adding for cosine rule are the two sides that are next to the angle and also the ang the sides that you're multiplying at the bottom, again, those two same sides. So only subtracting the one that's opposite it. Anyway, so when I put that into my calculator, um, I'll get... Where's my calculator? There it is. So 28 squared plus 31 squared minus 35 squared sets so 520. And then uh, two times 28 times 31, that's over 1736, which I imagine can be simplified, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. But lastly, we don't remember, we obviously don't want just what uh, cos theta is, I want theta. So I'm then going to do inverse cos of that. So 520 over 1736. And then when I put that into my calculator, I've got inverse cos of 520 over 1736, which gives me 72 degrees, 57, blah, blah, blah. The question was asking to the nearest degree. And this comes up a lot as well with these kinds of questions. Make sure you look at what you need to round it to because you will lose marks on it if you don't round correctly. So this is 73 degrees to nearest degree. Now, one interesting thing about this question, 
um, that I just want to point out here is we found this to be 73 degrees and that is correct. Only problem is looking at this diagram, it looks like this is actually greater than 90 degrees, um, if you can see. Um, and that's fine because again, it was not to scale and that's almost like a trick there. Um, you can check to see that this all works by like, if I did reverse cosine, like the cosine rule for side, uh, 31 squared plus 28 squared minus two times 31 times 28 times cos uh, 73 degrees, it will equal 35, all right? So I just wanted to mention that, that even though this might not look like 73 degrees, the maths is saying that it is. So it's not to scale. Um, lastly, uh, let's look at this question. And this is 2017, question 30C. So you guys might have seen this before. Um, but I chose this question because this is actually the very last question in the 2017 paper, or maybe I think it was the second last maybe. But that kind of kind of gives you an indication of how difficult that it should be. This might be like a band five, band six question. But hopefully we'll see that again, what you'll find is a lot of these questions boil down to just being the same thing. So the diagram shows the location of three schools. School A is five, um, five kilometers due north of school B and B is 13 kilometers due B and ABC is 135 degrees. So all that information has been put in here. So calculate the shortest distance from A to C correct to the nearest kilometer. So this is simply just finding this. Um, so we are trying to find a side where we have uh, the two other sides in the opposite angle. So that's going to be cosine rule, three sides, one angle. So we have x squared equals 5 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 5 times 13 times cos 135. So x squared equals... 5 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 5 times 13 times cos 135. And so I get here 285.923 dot 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 dot. And then so I get now I need to square root that of course. So I get x equals 16.909 dot dot dot. But the question is asking for the nearest kilometer. So therefore, um, AC, which was X, equals 17 kilometers to nearest kilometer. You, know, you wanna be as specific as you can about, so the question was asking the distance from A to C, 17 kilometers to the nearest kilometer. Put that in brackets, just say that like, I'm doing exactly what you asked me. Remember the key thing to succeeding in the HSC is making the marker's job as easy as it possibly can. So here's all my working, here's my answer at the end. No marker is gonna miss it. Bang, two out of two. Uh, determine, and then, so this question, so determine the bearing of, of school A from, uh, of school C from school A, correct in the nearest degree. So again, keyword here is from. That means we're starting here and I'm gonna just draw a little compass up here, okay? So from A to C, that means I'm trying to find this angle here. So obviously, just looking at it, it's gonna be 180 degrees plus whatever angle is in here. So all we need to do is find that angle. And so we now know that this is 17 and we can see that in part one, uh, we, we rounded it to the nearest kilometer. So we can just use that rounded answer now. We're allowed to do that. So I've got 17. And again, if it helps, we can just dissect the information that we have again. So we have this, 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 17, 135, theta and 13. I don't really need the five here because I'm going to be using sine rule when I just need the opposite angles and sides. That five is down here, is opposite to down here and I don't really need it. So from here, pretty simple, sine theta over 13 equals sine 135 over 17. If you do use this um, non-rounded answer, the 16.909, like you say, into your calculator, that's great as well. Like it doesn't matter which one you use. It's just because in the previous question, we had 17, so we can now use the 17. So going from here, now we have sine theta equals 13 times sine 135 over 17. And then, so 
theta equals inverse sine of that. And then to the nearest degree, um, so we've got theta, so that's inverse sine of 13 times sine 135 over 17. And that gives me uh, 32, like about 33 degrees. Now, I shouldn't be rounding just yet because I haven't answered the question. This is what a uh, trick part is. The question wasn't asking me to find that angle, right? The question was asking me to find the bearing. And I talked about right at the start of this question, I just need to do 180 plus whatever that is. So therefore the bearing is 180 degrees plus 33 degrees, which gives me 213 degrees. All right, and again, just looking at the diagram, you can imagine that to be sure because 213 degrees, that'll be just a bit after south. But yeah, the key word here is it's from school A. If I was looking at the other way from C, I'd be having to find that angle and that's gonna be different completely, okay? We can actually do now just find that fairly quickly because if I've got 33 degrees here, then that would be 33 degrees and that'd be the bearing. But again, that's not what we're asking to find. Anyway, so again, just to reiterate, I think you'll find that as you do question, um, past HSC questions and past trial questions and bearings, it really just comes down to this. Look at the information you have. You might need to use the bearings that you're given or something to do alternate angles or something, move some angles around but then probably gonna to have to use some sine rule and cosine rule. Now, as I've looked at past HSC questions over the years, I've typically seen that you're always given the diagram. You're not gonna be given just this and no diagram. Um, but that's not to say you can't be asked to draw your own diagram. You can. So but just know how to do that as well, but I've never seen them asked without a diagram. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have more questions related to bearings, be sure to uh, send a message and I'll help out. Thank you.